Hello, hello everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, we're here for another exciting uh, Climate Emergency Centre Network uh, Zoom presentation. We have the wonderful, the fantastic uh, Jules from uh, Community Climate uh, Action Group and also the I Farm Project in Norfolk. Fantastic project where they've got uh, acres of land in Norfolk doing uh, green projects and also uh, they've set up a community benefit society to get the local pub. But he's doing amazing stuff there, liaising with the local council, lots of groups. Um, so without too much further ado, over to Jules. Tell us about community climate actions and, and your great projects. Over. Thank you for coming. Over. Oh, you're muted. One sec. Unmute. Oh, there we go. Yeah, all I was saying is thanks, Phoenix. <laughs> this is probably great activity for anyone setting up like a climate emergency centre to then go and do in their community. Um, so I'm just going to fire up my PowerPoint at my moment. So give me one sec and hopefully this will work. And this is where I'm gonna have to share my screen. Yep. So hopefully you can now see a yep. fantastic PowerPoint presentation. Cool, cool. So this is about community climate action on the premise that the government is not coming to save us. You know, um, Rishi's just been to COP and he comes back, or he says he wants to be a world renewable in, a world superpower in renewables. And then immediately comes back and open up, opens up new oil and gas mines, um, or new oil and gas licenses and coal mines. So the government's not coming to save us. And COP, is a failure. Um, it's in the UAE, UAE this year, and the president of COP is also the head of a fossil fuel company. Oh, good. Uh, so, uh, so th I think you can imagine how that might go. And the United Nations has declared code red for humanity. Now, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, Preaching, already preaching to the converted, but let's just let that sink in a moment. Code red for humanity. And this is from the Proceedings for the National Academy of Science, which is an American based organization. And their results confirm that global warming is already on the verge of one and a half. Even if the climate forcing pathway is substantially reduced in the near term. So even if we turn off the tap of fossil fuel tomorrow, we're already gonna smash through one and a half degrees. We're likely gonna do it this decade. And one and a half degrees isn't a target. It's not goal. It's the safe upper limit for humanity. The humanity has never existed in temperatures beyond that so it's the safe upper limit and so people speak of hope as if it's a delicate ephemeral thing made of whispers and spiders webs and it's not hope has dirt on her face and blood on her knuckles the grit of cobblestones in her hair and she just spat out a tooth as she rises for another go <laughs> And that's, that's where we are right now. And so to all the people saying, what odds, we're, we're, all, we're all fucked. You know, and climate nihilism and anxiety is a big thing on young people. So everyone's saying we're already truly fucked. My response is that there are very, very different levels of truly fucked. And we're absolute fools if we don't fight as hard as we fucking can now to save whatever can still be saved. So walk with the dreamers, the believers, the courageous, the cheerful, the planners, the doers, the successful people with their head in the clouds and their feet on the ground. And let their spirit ignite a fire within you to leave this world a better place than when you found it. And this is one of my favorite quotes from Sir James Bevan, who is chair of 
or chief exec of the Environment Agency. Um, so climate change plus growth is an existential threat to our economy, our environment, our security, our happiness and our way of life. And we can, we can choose to ignore this problem or we can choose to tackle it. And I'm betting you're all in this room because you think the second optimal option is preferable to the first. So I'm just going to touch a little bit on Extinction Rebellion and on quite where we are now. Um, you know, because we all stand on the shoulders of giants and this isn't a zero sum game. So if you can go out and commit acts of civil disobedience, then do, because it's a logical consequence of our government's inaction on the climate and ecological emergency. But there's many, many people that won't join XR or just stop all or can't for whatever reason. So this diagram that I've drawn is um, a description of um, XR being the tip of the spear, along with the brave souls in just stop oil. But you know what? They don't talk about solutions. They don't talk about what we should do. So and with the extinction, <laughs> that's particularly because they don't want to prefigure the outcome of a citizens assembly. And if you get if you get involved in policy, it starts to be quagmire. So if XR don't fill that void, then the Daily Mail fill that fills that void with stories about a hair shirt future. Literally a couple of days ago, I saw um, uh, I saw a Telegraph headline, which was that climate change was a conspiracy to topple Western democracy. So. So, so, so that's what we're up against. Um, so we've got to fill that void. And so the other two pillars of that triangle really are community action and deliberative democracy, grassroots, grassroots ground up. So I'm going to, you know, I can't see everyone in the room, but what's, what's your, what's your plan? In 2019, in October, we convened a People's Assembly in Parliament as Extinction Rebellion, and we asked the government, what is your plan? And that was the theme of our rebellion. We asked all the ministries. But in this particular People's Assembly, actually in the Palace of Westminster, you know, we had Dale Vince from Bayes talking to, uh, sorry, talking to Bayes. Um, you know, we had a retired chief superintendent talking to the Home Office because we've got to have a credible plan here. So this presentation is about how to write your plan. So Community Climate Action is set up as an, an umbrella organisation to support all of you guys in this room and anyone else that wants to get involved to write and enact your Community Climate Action Plan. Now, this is designed to meet our respective district and county climate emergency targets. So what's not to like? You know, we are enacting our local and central government's policy. So very difficult to vote against. And we are growing community resilience in the face of crises by way of mutual aid. Now, mutual aid is the thing that we're all familiar with after the pandemic, where we actually came together to help one another in a crisis, you know, to bring food to one another, to help each other out where they're shopping and their medicine. And I tell you what, if you think the pandemic was bad, the climate crisis is like, hold my beer. Um, so we're basing it around our community farm and our pub is a demonstrator in East Anglia. So we bought our 10 acres of land. We're in the process of buying our community, our community pub. We've operated it for about a year. And that's our climate emergency center. This is how we reach and where we reach into our communities to talk about um, the crises uh, that is unfolding. And we're writing, a, we're writing a community climate action plan. And we've kicked off with our three parishes locally, um, which is Blow Norton, Hopton, Cum Neshul, and uh, um, and Thelnetham, which is where we are, and we've asked them, asked the council, will you vote for, on this? Can we can we write a community climate action plan? And they said yes. Um, the activity is funded by the national lottery because it's replicable, 
it's scalable and it leaves a legacy. Um, so these are our parishes and we're lucky enough to be in the county of Suffolk. Suffolk has the, the aspiration of being the greenest county in England and also has a net zero target of 2030 which is world beating. That's not just for the council's operations, that's for the entire county. So our county council is an exemplar that also others can follow. And I just wanna highlight that we're blue, we're blue through and through here and it's a Brexit voting area. Yeah, so if we can do it here, we can do it anywhere. So iFarm supported and funded by kind of the usual suspects, bit from District Council, Norfolk Community Foundation, Plunkett, and what have you. This particular activity is funded by the National Lottery. And this is my mate Dave and a bit of fungus at iFarm. And iFarm is, like I say, 10 acres of land limited gardening permaculture and about four acres of conservation and ecological management and education on our environment to improve soil health air quality river quality um and um carbon sequestration in the soil and we've we've spent a year clearing the, all the rubbish off it you know tons of metal tons of plastic but we've got some rigs down we're growing food we're starting to serve that food out our pub so it's a real story of farm to plate and that's really important and, a, and also an extended conversation we have that we're having with our farming community who are who are absolutely part of our community who want to transition but need to know what to do because transitioning is a lonely journey particularly for farmers you know they're stuck between big ag and the supermarkets they need they need some help um our our pub we're going to retrofit the fuck out of our pub. We're going to insulate it. We're going to cover it in solar energy and we're going to put in ground source heat pumps. And that means we're going to be a, a, a power station. That means we're going to be a net exporter of energy to our village. And we will form the cornerstone of a smart energy microgrid. Now, of course, it all starts where you are. And we happen to... We happen to be where we are in Thelen Ethan with the white horse and blown up with the land. And with our pub, we also provide a warm space because it's, you know, it's obviously been super cold. Um, but you know what? Um, our community, our, our community engagement officer in the county said, have you considered a cool space? And I, and I hadn't really for summer because we're gonna need cool spaces, just like we've needed warm spaces, which is really important to think about, because I think there was something like 10,000 excess deaths in last summer in Europe because of, the, because of the heat. And with El Nino, we're just gonna have another hot summer. So as well as warm spaces, we're also convenient cool space. I've got that slide in for a break, but I reckon I'll just, I'll just crack on uh, for the time being. Think we're doing all right for time um because next uh really wanted to just run through methodology skills funding and organization for your community climate action planning so number one is like i say present a resolution to your local parish or town council that's the lowest common denominator they're all volunteers none of them are paid they're all members of your community and i tell you what if you can go and join the council I have, I'm a parish councillor. And the resolution that we're asking is, as a member of the public, and anyone can ask this, um, I can we write a community climate action plan in support of our district and county council policy? Now, some policy might be better than others and we can work on that, but pretty much everyone that's declared has, has gone for at least 2050. And I reckon even if we change the government tomorrow and they say crack on, we're going to have to do this activity anyway. Um, so hopefully when they've said yes, and it, not necessarily all plain sailing, um, we got two or three vote unanimously yes. We got one where we got some significant objections, not, be, not wanting to be the greenest, count, greenest village. 
one of the members of the audience told me to go and talk to the Chinese embassy, for instance, and it narrowly passed three to two. But we did pass, it did pass. So we've got three parishes. So the second thing, once you've got the um, formal vote, is hold a series of workshops developing your plan. And at this stage, you don't need everyone. You just need a, 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 a you know, 5% is what we got. Um, but it is a participatory and open process, and that's super important. And, you know, advertise it on Nextdoor, social media, fly through everyone's letterbox, uh, parish council, notice boards, village halls, shops, um, parish magazines. And so everybody gets visibility because really important is participatory, really important is deliberative. Number three, write your plan and that and your plan will become a formal community plan lodged in the council minutes and it's permission for us to just go do we don't we need we don't need to wait for the government i'll come on to tell you uh, about ways of getting the capital the money that we can so we can actually deliver um these projects in our communities the fourth step is and this is again really important is presenting our plan via a people's assembly and this is presented back to the community, both those that wrote it and those that didn't, but anyone can come. It's a public meeting. And it's so that's deliberative democracy, an opportunity to object or to add, because your plan will sit alongside the neighborhood plan and the emergency plan. So once ratified by People's Assembly, you present it to your council for adoption. Um, and it should be formally adopted because it's been written by your community. We were lucky enough to have um, parish councillors and district councillors in the room writing this, along with people from the Norfolk and Wildlife Trust. So what, again, what's to object to? So hopefully it'll be formally adopted by the parish council. And so it forms a suite of documents, your emergency plan, your neighbourhood development plan, your biodiversity plan, which is part of community climate action plan and your community climate action plan there's a suite of documents in your parish that you've agreed to so we can set a time frame we can start to write a budget and we can all agree what we're going to do um so our first workshop was stakeholder mapping there's a few people in our pub and we did post-it notes classic post-it notes and we then had to sign up over the weekend for in the pub. Community climate action planning, stakeholder map. And we had people over a beer going, oh, you forgot this. You forgot this organization. And what we've ended up with is a really good diagram of land, shelter, political organizations, education, transport, faith, um, hospitality and local businesses surrounding our community. And all the types of organizations and people that we need to keep engaged. Sorry, Jules, what did you call that mapping? The mapping of community projects? Stakeholder mapping. Stakeholder mapping. That's what we need to do in each town and city. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's a good question, Phoenix, because actually out of that, we get a group of organisations that in our parish that need to be involved, like the pub, the shop, the school, the church, the village hall. Uh, the Women's Institute, the Bowls Club, etc. But you also get a sense of the organisations that are, are around us that are also on this same journey, the same journey with us. Jules, and that's a check format. Do you want people to save their questions towards the end or do you want uh, questions while it's going on? They can stick their hands up or... I would suggest questions at the end because I'm pretty much done. A few more cool. slides and then happily answer any questions. Right, stuff. Cool. Um, so this is an example of a few of our stakeholders, University of East Anglia, uh, West Suffolk College, who's offered to put on green skills courses, um, University of Suffolk, etc. And Professor Tim O'Reardon, chair of the Norfolk Association of Local Councils, has already said there's real scope for Nor Norfolk ALC to explore the lessons being learned here by Community Climate Action in terms of management, financing, recruitment, and widespread improvement of local livelihoods. And it and it should be connected to county-based devolution at an early stage. So, wow, what, what a recommendation to like all of the local councils in Norfolk, about 560 parishes. So we could just scale this county to county 
you know, between us. Um, so the workshop number two is community wellbeing and values. And this is important because it takes the isms out. So it's not conservatism, it's not socialism. Um, you know, it's really about what we value. What, what do you and I value together? Um, so this is, you know, what people, what people in our community valued. And, there are, and we all wrote down what we like, what we valued, and we put dots by it, three votes each. And we value world space and community and sharing and kindness. So we discuss what community resilience and well-being looks like. And we came up with five themes to work on, which is transport, energy, food, housing and nature and the environment. And then workshop number three is what action and projects do we want to take forward and what do we want to do first? We used a thing called a GROW methodology, working with a consultant from Aberdeen University, which is where we are, what the reality is, or our goal, where we want to be, what the reality is, what the options are, and who, who's going to do it, you know? So this is just a quick example of one of the projects that have come out of that, which is mapping our local sites and assessing the condition. So it's a biodiversity audit. One of the other projects, and there were many, is retrofitting all our homes. We've got 550, 84% of them need retrofitting. Where are the skills gonna come from? What company's gonna do it? And also what in terms of what company's gonna do it, where does the profit accrue? Where does the surplus accrue for the company delivering that service? I would recommend it, it accrues to a community benefit society um, for the benefit of the community. So we're literally setting up businesses to go do, to go retrofit. And I've got some good examples about that. Um, this is a slide for Bromsgrove um, Climate Action. They're up near Birmingham. And I just put this in to from the Bromsgrove uh, Climate Emergency Declaration. You know, on declaration of a climate emergency, a local authority is affirming that it will place the climate emergency at the center of its decision-making process. Now that's a powerful statement and it's their words and we need to use that and hold them to it. And then we've got whole suites of software and organizing, um, which I can share with everyone. This is Trello project management. We use Land Explorer for mapping and site planning. We use Miro for whiteboarding and stakeholder mapping. And we've got a lovely bit of software called One Planet that helps us actually um, put our plan into a digestible format based on um, the UN's SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. So health and happiness is created by the community and for the community, formally adopted by parish and town council and supported by district and town councils. And it's delivered by community benefit societies. And it's funded with a lot of interesting fiscal elements um, that are available now, like municipal bonds, we can literally create money. Our parish councils can do that up to half a million quid each, rinse and repeat as development capital. Mm -hmm. I won't go into too much detail about any of that now, but I'll happily answer any questions about that. Um, we can also be supported by local corporate banks and mutual credit. And so we're doing pretty well. Um, we're doing some really exciting stuff on the ground. We're scaling at speed. People are joining. And we now have a wait list of hundreds of parishes. So I invite you all to join us and write and deliver your community climate action plan. Thank you. Hey. Round of applause. Thank you very much. That's, that's amazing, Jules. That's, that's really incredible work you're doing. Helps lots of groups. Uh, around the country start to work out the uh, community climate action plan okay folks so um that's recorded so we can uh, network that out to other people and things um has anyone got a question there they'd like to ask jules uh okay so we've got big screen back we've got the 12 us now so um jude was first on the draw i think you can either stick your hand up physically or it helps me if on the bottom there's a little reactions tab you can raise your hand like that can see who's one, two, three. So Jude first, then Helen, then Debs. Over.
Um, I was trying to take notes there, but I just ran out of steam. <laughs> Can we have the slides, please? They look really, really, really useful. Yes, you can have the slides. Thank you. Beyond the slides, which are, which is literally just a presentation, yeah. we are literally publishing all of our methodology, our, everything that we've used in terms of workshops, even the ways and means of facilitating, you know, even icebreakers. And we we will also publish our grant initial grant application for national lottery. We'll also pu uh, publish our evidence base for the end of the grant funded activity, and we will share the IP of everything that we're doing okay. on the basis that we need to scale as scale as quickly as possible. Yeah, yeah. Is that going to be shared to us through Phoenix or um, when when it's ready? <laughs> Yes, um, we're building a wiki and it, we've got links to that. And then we've got a variety of Google Docs and we're just launching a website. OK, OK, thank you. Cool. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, how we share these documents is great. So Jules will be putting them out. But yeah, if you can share them with us, we'll share them with the network and uh, replicate and scale up. Helen? I'm, I'm going to ask for my usual um slightly thick perspective i keep hearing things like oh we've got to find out all the stakeholders don't really know what you're talking about stakeholder i know our group have uh, have spoken about it and they're saying oh yeah well there's the nhs and there's the university and there's this and it's like surely the majority of the stakeholders are the blooming people who live there and it seems to be going on to corporate side rather than ordinary people Good question. What is a stakeholder? Let's always try and de-jargonize whenever we can. Campaign for plain English. Uh, it's, a great, it's a great question. It's a great question. People say to me, why do you care about the environment so much, Jules? It's because I live there. <laughs> <laughs> so when we talk, when we when we talk about stakeholders, like let's mention the NHS. They are their pit there. It's not an amorphous uh, organization. It's a bunch of people. And all of the people that work work in that hospital will live and interact and shop and socialize in our communities. So our stakeholder mapping is 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 about, well, where do we where do we draw the geographical boundary for our particular activity? So, yeah, we've got all our residents. Yeah, absolutely. But then within that, what what other organizations do we have that might be stakeholders? So for me, our pub is a stakeholder. It's a business. It operates in the locale. And, you know, we have we have a very large south facing roof for solar. We have an opportunity to produce solar for our community. And our biggest expense is a cellar cooler, which cools the, the beer, but chucks heat straight up in the atmosphere. So the pub's a stakeholder. We've got a school. Well, the school's a stakeholder. All the kids that go there, their parents. Um, you know, and so, and when we broaden it beyond that, um, you mentioned, uh, Helen, um, your university. They are a big stakeholder in this kind of activity because some of the things that we're proposing are changes in public sector procurement policy. So Suffolk County Council have a climate change procurement ask. So we can we as communities, because we live and work there and we use, we both use the services and we have probably have friends and colleagues who work there can start can start to change these mechanisms. So a stakeholder is someone who lives is is your neighbor, is a person or is an organization that that has a part to play in this transition, both big and small in inside. Yeah, yeah. inside. I hope that clarifies. Yeah, from, I, from, I mean, from, I, I, from, I couldn't from. actually see what was on your stakeholder thing because it was a sort of swirly diagram. I couldn't read it, but I just know I feel here in Leeds that if you're talking stakeholders, you're talking to the boss of the hospital, the boss of the fire service, the boss of that. And I don't see how that gets the ordinary people in. In fact, I think it shuts them out. Um, actually, in response to that, you probably won't be talking to the boss. You'd probably be talking to the head of sustainability. Yeah, but it's still a, it's still a boss of an area, isn't it? And, it's not no, Joe no, Public. 
<laughs> well, every, well, every single person you've mentioned is literally Joe Public. The boss of the hospital is literally Joe Public. He yeah, is, but I want to talk to the lady on the. I want to talk to the lady on the Tilly Nasda, and I want to talk to that's, the teenager who, who's a care worker. Do you know what I mean? It's, Fabulous, you get those Helen, people in as well. Helen, fabulous is mm. not a zero sum game. You need to mm. do both of those things. You know, so you to need... clarify, it, a stakeholder can be an ordinary person or a group or an organisation. It can be anyone yes. down the shop or it can be someone who runs, you know, a, a local project or a local school group. It can be Joe Bloggs or it can be someone who's working on a specific uh, project and things. So anybody who is involved with that local community as a person or as a group is, is part of a stakeholder. That, that clarifies things a bit. That's yeah, good. yeah. I think stakeholder. Yeah, welcome, Martin. Nice to see you beaming in. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very good uh, topic. And yeah, it's good. The procedures we have been taken through. Now, a stakeholder is like we are talking about the climate action project. Who does the project impact? I think that's a, a better word. Whoever is be impacted by the project, and everybody is impacted by climate action because we all share the same surroundings and the environment. So I think it impact, anybody who is impacted by the program is a stakeholder, mm. but then we cannot include everybody. So that's why we go to schools and those organized institutions and organized groups who can have a who can who can, who can have a, a, an impact or who can who so, can yeah, who have got an impact of what we are talking about. Mm. Yeah, absolutely right. It's going to impact all of us, and it's going to take all of us. Yeah, and no. the, the 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 reason for for doing a stakeholder mapping exercise is understanding those groups around you that need to be kept informed, that need to be engaged, or will participate in the activity to the benefit of us all. And mm. without that map, then you're oper we're respectively operating in a vacuum. Mm. And if we haven't contacted everyone that we can think of on that map that we would consider a stakeholder and invited them personally, even if we get a no, I wrote to the Bishop of Suffolk. I got a polite no, but he was invited. He knows it's happening. And again, it's a really important bit of the participatory and the deliberative process is that silence is consent. If they don't come and they don't participate in the plan, the plan goes ahead. Okay. And we only need about 5% at the moment to write the plan. And that's doable in a community. And at 25%, it becomes normal and, and the rest follow. And there's lots of evidence to show that in uh, other social change and um, social health things like smoking. Um, this is my okay. worst. <laughs> I think Devs has got a question there. And then round the panel, if anyone else has, uh, has got, a, got a question. I see we've got Peter McFadden from Flatback Democracy as well. Maybe we can work out how Flatback Democracy and Community Climate Action Plans could work together. Uh, Debs, you got a question? Yeah, it weren't really a question, just really picking up on the stakeholder stuff and that, because we've had similar conversations. And to me, it's about the stakeholders are community members. So you start from grassroots, your cleaners and like you work in men's clubs and your pubs like Jules pubs. Like, and funnily enough, today we've been talking about a pub which is potentially a good building for us because it's like on the river and I think I spoke of it before but it would be interesting to get Jules down to talk to our group about how they got the pub and how it like come about and stuff to get like community interest and excited because I mentioned it today and it like lit up the room it was like because it's a pub isn't it it's like at the heart <laughs> of the community <laughs> so, so yeah but, so yeah. just to just to touch on that, Debs, because it's, it's a really important point, spaces to gather so we can all experience joy and have a little bit of fun in this. Uh, one of our, I'll tell you two bits of feedback from our workshop or workshops in the, in the pub, our first one, the stakeholder mapping workshop. Number one is um, 
uh, one of our farmers left halfway through and he said, I'm sorry, Jules, this is really fucking boring. I'll see you later. When's the action <laughs> happening? Yeah. So that was a bit of feedback we got from a farmer because everyone doing the thing with post-it notes, everyone's done it a million times before. The second bit of feedback we got was from uh, John, who used to work for Mid-Suffolk District Council, who's a committed environmentalist and cycles here all the time. And it, he's really engaged. But he just said, he said, um, what you're doing won't make any fucking difference. Try as hard as you want. We're fucked. <laughs> and um, the, the, the response to that from a member of our team called Tim, and I'm with Tim on this, is Tim said, I don't care. I'm going to go down fighting and I'm going to have a lot of fun while I do it. <clears throat> nice attitude. I now, think now, you, now you're... Yeah, absolutely. Now, your stakeholders, where you are, will be different from mine. I'm in a I'm in a very rural farming community. So our farming community is a massive stakeholder in Suffolk. Yeah. Um, but I tell you what, I've I've hooked up with a football with Grimsby Football Club Debs. Um, because they've got a community group there that they're doing great things in their community. So similar kind of things that I'm talking about. And they're really interested in community climate action planning. And what we've got in common is they brew their own beer. And they brew a beer named after a football chant. <laughs> and their football chant is called, we piss on your fish. <laughs> <laughs> so Grimsby have a beer called, we piss on your fish. We've brewed a beer called Comrade Bill Bartram's Egalitarian Anti-Imperialist Soviet Stout. And we're, we've now got a journey to Grimsby to do a swap of kegs, because we've got this in common. So there's more that connects than divides. And I tell you what, as in terms of non-traditional audiences, um, you know, Grimsby's a whole lot more working class and has different challenges to here. So our communities and our stakeholders are going to be different, but it's really important we know who they are. You know, Grimsby Football Club in Grimsby is a stakeholder. So, yeah, I hope, I hope you enjoyed the anecdote. <laughs> nice, nice. I think there's, I mean, there's something in the Climate Emergency Centre handbook that we put in originally about, it's an old circus plan that when you go to a town, you try and reach out to a whole range. There's a list of 50 different sorts of groups. That It's a general list that you could find in any town or city whatever that is, you know, students groups, women's groups, faith groups, environmental groups, vegan groups, you know, whatever, whatever it is, you know, union groups, and, and trying to reach out to them to tell them, look, there's a chance we're going to get this building in the centre of town and we'd like to get an alliance of groups working together. Um, so finding the word for that, that is, you know, uh, one of those words is, you know, those are stakeholder groups. We've also learned tonight, you know, stakeholders are individuals and ordinary members of the public who can come and get involved and i've seen from running these eco centers for 30 years that you know we've got to have hope and that uh, every single one of these buildings is a mothership and it creates a massive amount of change and we can change the future if we all give up hope and think we're doomed and don't do anything and just go back to watching tv every day then the doom gets worse for, for our children's generation let alone our grandchildren's generation yeah. if we all have hope and every single day do a few actions of whatever we can do to make it a slightly better future, share some information, you know, reuse, repair, have space for these, you know, centers to set up that are motherships for not just five, 10, 15, 20, 30 different projects. Plus, you know, there are motherships and many things to happen. We need to develop these community climate action plans. And part of that is having, reusing the empty building, vacant property infrastructure in every town and community. You know, there are empty, pubs, schools, houses, village, you know, all different sorts of spaces that could be used for amazing projects. So maybe we can start to write these things into our community climate action plans and say, map the empty buildings and the vacant properties that are in our areas and uh, council areas, and then work together with the stakeholders to fill them up with good projects that are gonna work. And that's partly what climate emergency centers are about. And we're excited to work together with Community Climate Action to try and, you know, um, map these spaces and make plans. And there's some practical tools. Tell in a question there, and I'll come over to anyone else who's got any... Uh, I, I think Peter's way, been waving got something Peter's back. probably got a burning question. <laughs> no, I, I, did, I did wave my hand. I think, I think Phoenix, you're absolutely right. But it's also that thing of um, 
uh, it's unlikely that the ship will just sink. Well, it won't. And there'll be a period of time. And therefore, you know, if we if we're doing the right things, then, uh, you know, it'll be it'll be less. We have no idea what's going to happen, really, have we? But, you know, the impact will be less. We, it's not like we're, we're there's suddenly going to be a moment where the whole thing crashes. So the doing the right thing is 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 right for that reason, too. It's really nice to see Jules and I last saw each other in a field outside Froome, didn't we? I think in real life. Um, and when you were when you were sort of dreaming of all what you yeah. just seen, you know, you were talking about it. Of, I've got a mate with a field, sort of thing. Um, and so it's really lovely to see that as um, as real life, and you know, and, and and how much further all that's got. When I saw this was on, I didn't realise it was you. So that was actual. <laughs> I don't, you know, not that there's I don't know how many jewels there are, but should have thought of that. Anyway, that was very nice. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm doing a series of lectures, if that's the right word. No, they're not really. Series of workshops with Black Mountain um, College. Great. Based in, um, based in Wales. Really lovely uh, collective, really, that's doing work around climate change in, in an educational way. So I came partly to crib ideas and so on. So I'm, I'm definitely be onto your website. And, um, you know, because the things that you're doing. Those workshops are really meant for well, they're meant for counsellors and people who might want to be. But at this the level we're talking about, I mean, if you became a counsellor, bloody hell, anyone must be able to. Quite. <laughs> That's what I'm here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, so, I mean, so, so it's not like it's not like it's yeah. it's um highly competitive politics, is it? It's just it's no. a, but it's a tool. Being on the council, I absolutely, you know, brilliant that you are. I think so many people stay clear of it and don't don't engage because they just think oh well, it's just a bunch of old white middle class men which it mostly is and therefore don't engage and that's a real missed opportunity it is it is so yeah if i can be a counselor anyone can be that's a really good point uh if you told me two years ago i'd be i'd be a parish counselor i wouldn't have believed you um yes you have to sit through a lot of tedium and there's a lot of conversation about uh speeding um playground and dog fouling but if you can get beyond that and start talking about the real infrastructure that we need parish town councils have a lot of power and peter's done a lot, a lot of awesome work on that and you know what i've just presented is very little original thought you know we stand on the shoulders of giants and it's from the work that peter and i have done and the learning i've had from flat pack democracy and others that has enabled this to happen and it continues to 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 flower and I think I think you made a couple of really important points there, Peter. One is we don't know what's going to happen, but I I have a feeling the next decade is going to be tough in terms of El Nino and drought and uh, food supply. You know, lack of tomatoes and salad that was grown in Morocco and Spain where they're having terrible droughts and water, water literally water wars. Um, so we need to mitigate and adapt for that. So a, a part, a good proportion of this is mitigation and adaptation. Where is your power coming from? Where is your food coming from? Where is your water coming from? And how is your community planning for that in the next decade to sit along your climate, sit alongside your emergency plan? You know, um, and the other the other thing, actually, Peter, I'm, I'd be super excited about talking about Black Mountain because I've read all about that. And I'm I'm really excited about the, the the degree they're putting on. And we've got a proposal for uh, um, a, a Breckland Sustainability Institute working with the University of East Anglia, Suffolk University, West Suffolk College, Breckland District Council, Norfolk County Council for a 150 acre site for an exemplar for all of the, you know, very large scale, a kind of center for alternative technology east, the working title is East of Eden, and really want to talk to Black Mountain. So that would be, that would be super cool. Is your email what it always was? No, it's changed. Uh, it's Jules, okay. I'll pop, pop it in the chat. Yeah, do. I've got yeah. a document we, I can send you, but, yeah, but and I'll, anyone I'll... else that wants to get in touch as well, you know. Thanks. I'll, I'll get in touch and let's have that conversation. Then I can put you in touch with the Black Mountain people. And because uh, clearly there's a, there's a, conversation to have cool I, i've popped them in the chat there folks flat pack democracy um peter's been uh networking for a long time and and uh, black mountain college looks very interested in the designing the future you know we really need to kind of start working focusing on solutions and that's part of what climate emergency center is about is having the physical spaces where people can learn share skills and experiment on the kind of sustainable futures 
uh, that we, you know, we, we can be building. Um, was there any other questions or feedback from around the university challenge panel? Anyone who wanted to share anything? Like? It, Helen? It's, not it's not really a question on that, but I was just thinking what you're saying about working with the universities. We've sort of <clears throat> worked with Leeds City College and they have the biggest college of sort of building and stuff like that. And we've sort of said to them, you know, are you training people on retrofit and heat pumps and this, that and the other? And they're sort of interested in it, but it's this chicken and the egg that people aren't going to go and train to do it when there aren't the jobs there to do. It's how, how do you turn some something like that and make them leaders rather than they're waiting until the funding comes in? Sure. Well, I can tell you now that it's a £65 billion market opportunity just to retrofit the houses to the government's own um, standards by 2035. So it's a huge market, there are loads of companies, they're all hiring. There's not enough people to mm. do it. Um, we can show you and put them in touch with our, our local college who have the course material. There's the thing called the Retrofit Academy who will deliver the course content at, at colleges. And my housemate, Laura, has just qualified with the Retrofit Academy as a retrofit assessor. Mm. Um, she's also an EPC assessor. And we're going to be starting our own business in, in, in East Anglia here, retrofitting homes. Um, so we need those um, employees. We need those young people with skills from our college. We'll hire them. Yeah. If we do three houses a month, an average of 30 grand a, a, a house, um, that's that's 1.2 million turnover a year. And if we do it at that speed and start today, it will take us 13 years just to do our three villages. So that's the scale mm. of the of the uh, um, market for a just transition for post COVID economic regeneration and jobs. That's the language I use when I'm talking to the council, you know, or the college. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that shows some of the scale. So that's the kind of action that we need to have. You know. Peter, I think, uh, Peter Armstrong there. Yeah, just to put in two pennies, if I may, I'm gonna to have to go in a moment. Yes, um, one thing which Anna Rother and I are doing here with our little One Climate Center, which is a, a building and a resource and a small cinema for local community, particularly for local councillors, uh, brings an, uh, the dimension of media into this, which I think is quite interesting. For example, we finished a, a big film about David Fleming and his whole approach to so how how to survive the future to use his phrase with some really very still revolutionary ideas i think about how we can all do that and showing that has led to some very very good local discussions about many of the issues you're talking about so and we're making films also all the time about the local community actions that are happening very small scale you know a vegan a new vegan display at an exhibition or a car sharing group or uh, working with local rivers uh, short pieces of video we then play back to the community and try to put them in a global context. This is what you're doing locally. It's not a small thing because just multiply it up globally, it's exactly what we all need to be doing. So I just add in that kind of media piece, which um, if we can contribute, that's the thing which we sort of specialised on so far in this centre, which Anne Rather's set up uh, just here. Wow, fantastic. Yes, and... Um... I think it was George Marshall said, a set of facts, no matter how well attested, will never change someone's mind. Yeah, and George was at our, uh, one of our meetings, a few meetings back, um, precisely saying that kind of thing. So. Exactly. Yeah. What he said is, you need a good story to dislodge an, another story, and the storytellers rule the world. So yes, thanks, Peter. I would definitely be in touch because we've got, we've got, you know, we've got some storytelling to do here. I passed around a rather want to say something. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, need to unmute Anna rather. <clears throat> I was only going to say um, I asked George if he would come and help us with our launch, which is only in January. So we've only been around three and a bit months. But um, we've been completely astonished at how many people have turned up. I mean, at meetings which I expected five people to turn up, you know, there's no room for everybody to sit down without to sit on the window seats and 
it's just amazing. And this is an area where we live, which is so reactionary generally. You know, the councils have been like dinosaurs. And we, I've just been canvassing this afternoon, try and help a friend who wants to stand as a green, but it's really hard work around here. And yet, when you actually talk about local actions, people just feel, just keep saying, we feel so inspired that other people are doing it. And I keep saying, well, it's not theory, you know, it's actually now. And guess what? You're doing it. It's not the government. It's not big business. You're doing it. And they kind of go, yes, we're, and it's real. It's already happening. So just have to keep building on that. Beautiful. Oh, cool. Keep at it. I think we'll go around the screen maybe to kind of check out and feedback, folks. Uh, so just um, we're on about the hour. Um, thank you very, very much to Jules. We'll give you some parting comments at, at the end. Uh, do we just want to go around if you, if anyone would like to uh, just do your your check out or any feedback, anything you've you felt about what you've heard over? Should we come over to Fanny? I, I believe a new Bournemouth group setting up to set somewhere in Bournemouth, isn't it, Fanny? Over. Uh, the, yeah, that's the hope. Um, thanks, guys, for <clears throat> for welcoming me in and some amazing information and some real inspiration. So thank you very much. Lots to think about. Cool. Do you want to pass on to anyone, Fanny? Um, I will pass on to Jude. Okay. Thanks. Yes. I, yes. I, I'm really glad I came tonight. Um, usually can't make these things. Um, it's been really interesting and I'm really looking forward to getting our building and starting this kind of thing. Yeah, we, we, we're in a very rural farm community as well. Okay, shall I pass on to Chris? Yeah, um, yeah I agree. It's a um, great plan. Um, if it can be replicated, um, I'm, I'm kind of very interested in joining a group and doing so. Um, I'm in Dulwich though, West Norwood, so there's a few places outside Purley maybe, but um, yeah, so is, sounds great. Thanks. Come over to Martin. Oh yes, for me it's very inspiring, especially to I joined this group and I am also a member of the whole Friends of the Earth. And I've been trying some projects, climate action in Africa, where there is absolutely nothing, no resources. And it has been quite inspiring to hear from Suffolk about the plans of putting together something can, that is something can be replicated on trying to put an action plan for climate action. and. Yeah, quite good, and I want to continue being part of this this uh, forum. Then, thank you, Martin. Coming over to Leeds, uh, Helen on the University Challenge panel. Well, I'd just like to thank Jules because I've been asked to do a fifteen-minute talk at uh, something, and I think it will be ninety percent of your slides if you share them quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> and um i'll Brilliant. pass to deb's <laughs> <laughs> it's always nice to help we need help. jules to do a northern tour <laughs> and do a presentation for us all because it's really interesting and it's like weird how like today we've been actually talking about some other stuff so the universe is speaking <laughs> think positive people well, i think we can ride the storm <laughs> pass on to who's that been jude have you been uh, armet or peter armet <clears throat> yeah hi uh th thanks for the invite uh in phoenix yeah it's always uh um good to hear about all these uh projects um you know we're trying to do a project of our own uh, trying to set up a enfield uh energy or community energy group so uh yeah, it's all happening. I think it's it's, it's uh, on the um, you know you know huge momentum um, coming on in this space in sustainability and, and community, um, you know climate action sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally uh, you know support it all. Uh, yeah, thanks for that. 
Great stuff. Uh, uh, over to Peter. Which one? Unmute. Oh, sorry, Peter McFadden. Uh, oh, thanks. Um, no, I just I, I I very much agree with what um, Anuradha was saying earlier. I think I mean the grassroots, the communities is where is where it's at. You know, it's it's only going to happen here. National government is a complete and utter waste of time. Um, I mean, unfortunately, it does things which piss us all off. But other than that, it's just you know, it's not it serves no useful function as far as I can see. And this is the only place where action will be. And these elections are quite interesting in that way. I mean, I'm not involved in anything political party political or otherwise really except for a few supporting of groups in um in towns uh, one of which in new forest is definitely going to win a group of independents will win whatever happens because there's more of them than the others um but uh yeah that's where it's at and there's lots of really uh, lots of people including in hard blue areas are kind of going have totally lost faith with national government so are turning more to not necessarily to green politics, but to to localism and and um, you know transition movements and 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 exactly what Jules' project is. I think so. God bless us all at the local level. Oh, sorry, I sounded like the king then, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well, what an excellent way to end. God, God bless us on the local level, because yeah, it's only going to come grassroots ground up. It's only going to happen if we yeah. if we all do it. And um, yeah, people have lost faith in the national government, even the conservatives around here. Anna Adna, do you want to say anything? Um, I just want to say, um, uh, have you heard Pete the Temp? He's a yes. wonderful poet and singer. And his, his um, line is, um, you know, uh, well, talking especially about the news media and how dreadful it is, you know, in keeping everything reactionary. And he says, uh, you know, um, don't don't watch the news be the news yes. and don't don't wait for the movement move yes that's the thing we are the movement we're here already but we don't know we are because until we see each other we don't know how many of us there are we are already the many but we don't know it so the more people like you talk Jules and inspire us by being visionary and very very practical I was very impressed with the combination of the two <laughs> You wow, know, thank we, you. When we know, when we know um, we're here. Yeah, I'm <laughs> blushing now. <laughs> but yes, Pete the Temps, um, Pete the Temps track, um, don't watch the news, be the news, don't don't wait for the movement move. Uh, it's one of my favorites. It's on an XR um video that I helped produce. Um, I'll send it to you, but it's absolutely awesome. And um, but yes, people have lost faith in the national government and they know they know they're being fleeced, they know the oligarch media story, they know the story about the banks. Um, you know, none of this is news. And actually, on our ballot paper that I saw locally, it, they didn't call themselves cons just conservatives. They were all called local conservatives, okay. local conservative. So that, yeah, that was hilarious. So what I've heard is people want to set up groups, people want to do stuff, um, people want some copies of the slides. Um, it was visionary, practical, and inspiring. Which, like I said, I'm slightly blushing now. Um, so I really look forward to keeping in touch with everyone here and, um, you know, and helping helping you take action where you are. Oh, that's great! How can we get, how can we reach you? <laughs> so yeah, George, do you want to share a contact there and just a couple of parting bits? There was um, you mentioned towards the end there was some different. Uh, platforms you use i put land explorer in there i think i found the right miro there was another one one planet but if you can share them with us in the network we could share them out to people and uh jules also mentioned at some point there's a way that you can yeah raise funds and things so you're going to share the slides are you jules i'll, sh I'll share the slides but more than that it's community climate action is not just me We've formed a project team under self-organizing principles. If you're in XR or these groups, you'll be all you'll be very familiar with that kind of stuff. Um, we've got a really good project team. We're, we're funded for this activity by National Lottery. We've delivered exceptionally well, so we expect to get a, a further round of funding to help us scale nationally and support local groups. We're publishing a website, publishing a playbook and a wiki with all the documentation on how to do it. Cool. Okay, um, Deb, something's got one. I was just checking. Peter, did you feel like you'd uh, you'd you'd had a, a check out, or did you want a final comment, Peter Armstrong? Uh, yeah, no, just to say thank you very much. Learned a terrific lot. Look forward in being in touch with many of you to uh, improve that learning and uh, 
um, Black Mountain too, very interested in. Um, I need to go now, but great to meet you all. Bye. Thank you very much for coming. Please pop a link in about your project before you go if you can. Debs, quick parting shot. I just wanted to say that we, we bumped into Pete the Temp in London. <laughs> He's coming to Blackpool, I think, to do a gig. <laughs> I just Brilliant. wanted to say and promote, promote him because he's good. Cool. All right, lovely. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Thank you very much, Jules, uh, for, the, for the enlightening talk. And let's uh, keep building those climate emergency centres and get your community climate action plan together wherever you are. Find those empty buildings, the bits of land we can use and uh, get on with creating a resilient future as quick as you can for all future generations in this generation. All right, one love. Thank you very much, Jules. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so Bye. much. Thanks, Bye. everyone. I'm going to stop the Thanks, Jules, Phoenix. Welcome. All right, let me stop recording. Cool. Mm -hmm.